This was a recognition of Monash's engineering career. Two medals that came to him towards the end of his life that were extremely significant medals for his uh, engineering services. The Peter Nicol Russell Memorial Medal was awarded by the Institute of Engineers in Australia and that was just more broadly for his career as an engineer which spanned at least 30 years. The other medal given to him for his enormous significant contributions to turning around the State Electricity Commission as it was known then. He was the foremost innovator in, um, in a sense, moving Victoria away from dependence on black coal from New South Wales onto brown coal in the La Trobe Valley. Obviously, currently, these projects are being divested as we move on to other sources, but they've been the predominant energy sources um, for the last 70 years in Victoria, and that's part and parcel of Monash's legacy. Monash was knighted on the Western Front in August 1918 by King George V. It was a very significant moment because it was the first time in about two or three hundred years that an army commander had been knighted on, on the battlefield. This was a knighthood where the king was prepared to travel while the war was still ongoing and go to a battlefield uh, in, in, in a sense of place of personal danger in order to knight his general uh, on the battlefield in front of his troops. An extraordinary knighthood amongst all the knighthoods for both Australia and the Commonwealth. Monash's sword is an 1897 Patton Infantry Officer's sword. It has the royal cipher of King George V in scroll work on the, on the hilt and also on the blade as well as the name of the manufacturer, Henry Wilkinson from Wilkinson Swords. It also has a registration number on the side and we're currently trying to use that to identify exactly when the sword was manufactured. Well, this is obviously a very personal moment um, for Monash. Not only is he back in Melbourne, um, uh, not only is he heading the Anzac Parade, but he's also walking across Princess Bridge, the, the bridge that he helped to build uh, when he was a young man. So um, there must have been a lot going through his mind. Um, uh, it's a bridge that connected him to Melbourne. It's a bridge that connected him to his past, to his days as a student uh, um, here in Melbourne. I think he might have had a bit of a smile. He might have had a look and seen if there were any little cracks or nooks that he hadn't quite, uh, hadn't quite uh, uh, fixed yet or forgotten about or something like that. Or, hang on, you missed a bit, you know, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Monash was awarded an honorary doctorate of civil laws by Oxford University in 1919. Monash wasn't the only World War I commander to receive the honorary doctorate. Field Marshal Sir Douglas Haig um, also received one. Um, General Pershing, who commanded the US forces, he also received one as well. So there's quite a number of notable um, dignitaries in that particular ceremony. So that photograph is, is, is a very unique piece of history. His engineering is hugely important. His student years were hugely important in making the military man. Monash was foremost an engineer, but he was a, an, a practical, organised engineer when he was a young student. One of his first jobs was helping to build the Princess Bridge in Melbourne. Uh, subsequently, he helped finish that off after he graduated and built a series of bridges around Melbourne. When it comes to his military career, this is how he wins the war in the sense that he comes to each battle as an engineer 
everything in modern warfare was about preparation and he was one of the foremost project supervisors in a sense that we've ever had. Monash was awarded a Doctor of Engineering by the University of Melbourne. It was the first um, doctorate in engineering that was awarded in Australia. What he submitted for his thesis was his book on the Australian victories in France in 1918. It made perfect sense. I mean, a man like Monash uh, um, should be remembered by a major institution. The uh, university was a new university, uh, an innovating new university. Monash was an innovator, was an engineer, as well as his uh, military contributions. He was also involved in education. He was vice chancellor at Melbourne University, hugely interested in the power of education. Himself, he went through um, education as a means to improve himself, but also the strengths of Monash. It was designed, in a sense, as a, a science and technology based university uh, built around engineering and science, which is still Monash's strengths, uh, the university and the man. Monash University's coat of arms borrows a couple of elements from Monash's um, coat of arms, um, most notably the laurel wreath and the sword. They're present in both coats of arms. We've got the Southern Cross in the university's coat of arms and the, there are also a number of stars on Monash's coat of arms. So they were trying to make a tangible link between um, Monash the man and the university. A perfect a sensible arrangement to name a university after Monash, to take on board that sentiment, um, particularly in light of the current um, situation at Monash, still heavily specialising in, in the sciences and engineering, still with the reputation uh, for engineering uh, that uh, Sir John Monash would be proud of.